Last week, we had an, a webinar that was looking at climate crisis, gender-based violence, and mental health. This is a continuation towards the preparation of our input as women globally that are affected directly by the impact and effects of climate change, which is going to be explained by the different panelists. We welcome you all to this space. And it is our wish as all of us are interested in participating in all decision-making processes because climate change does not only affect a certain sector of society. One a speaker, you know, I think it's in the UK, said when it rains, rain doesn't necessarily, does not affect men only. It pours on all of us. So the effects of those rains, those winds, affect everybody. Women happen to be in a sector of society that is experiencing a lot of discrimination, oppression. We know we've been talking about it. Now women are the most affected. As we prepare to journey to the 66th session of the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women in the United States, Elita Lavandu, in partnership with the African Women's Independent Forum, CPUT, UN Women, have converged this round table. Not so round, but the round table, man, Solis. As Osis Ndutu had alluded, as a continuation to a webinar that we recently hosted as Elita, which focused on uh, climate crisis, gender-based violence, mental health during the COVID-19 pandemic, which ideally was to pave the way for women's voices to have an input and a say in a space which is largely dominated by the male voice. This roundtable gives us an opportunity to engage the Deputy Minister as one of the leaders who will be present and representing South Africa and the South African women at the table. So, Minister, you do have a seat. So, we are asking you to represent us. We don't want to miss an opportunity to have a voice as well as an influence in the process before the South African delegation embarks to New York. Since our existence as an organization, we've always created such platforms, even in the height of COVID-19, we ensured that women's voices are constantly heard at the United Nations. Recent Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change 6th Assessment Report, science has confirmed yet again that even if deep emission has happened right now, the world will inevitably be struck by exacerbating impact resulting from log-in warning until the end of the cycle. We don't doubt that one, but that's what has started happening now. This clearly tells us that the gender-responsive climate action is no longer an option, but an imperative. Detrimental effects of climate change can be felt in the short term through natural hazards such as landslides, floods and droughts, and in the long term through a more gradual degradation of the environment as indicated above. The adverse effect of these events are already felt in many areas and sectors such as agriculture and food security. Biodiversity and ecosystems, water resources, human health, human settlements and migration patterns, energy and dry spots. It is indeed common knowledge that the effects of climate change affect women and girls adversely. Women and girls are more vulnerable to the effects of climate change primarily as they constitute the majority of the world's poor and are in many instances more dependent for their livelihoods on natural resources that are threatened by climate change 